Good evening, this is Dr. Gary Linder, and I'd like to thank you for joining this evening's Healthy by Choice class. We're gonna talk about something that's, uh, I think, of interest to most people, and that's bottled water uh, in plastic bottles. Uh, we're gonna call it the great bottled water debate. Uh, but first, we're gonna do a little review on our self-care and self-care principles, then we'll, we'll get into the presentation. So, through the self-care awakening, uh, we really talk about some simple, easy ways that we can all be healthy or healthier by choice. And we all agree we can't put a price on our health because without it, we really don't have much. Self-care is an active process through which people become aware of and then make choices for a healthier life. So each week we bring an awareness to a problem, why we have this problem, and solutions for the problem and how we can address this through the concept of the Nikan Wellness Home and all be healthy by choice, not by chance. Our biggest problem is chronic disease. And today the US leads the world in chronic diseases and pharmaceutical consumption. Even though we only represent 4.4% of the world's population, we consume 75% of the world's pharmaceutical drugs. But this isn't just a problem in the US, it's a global issue. It's chronic diseases are the leading cause of death and disability worldwide, and they are advancing globally across every region and pervading all socio and economic classes. Currently 50% of adults worldwide have at least one chronic condition and one in three suffer with two or more. Chronic diseases have interrelated common risk factors and they're largely preventable. Uh, the World Health Organization and the Centers for Disease Control both agree that nearly 80 to 85 percent of our biggest killers could be prevented. Yet we spend nearly 90 percent of our health care dollars on treating these diseases rather than preventing them. And here are the top five killers, uh, top five chronic diseases um, in, in the world. It's heart disease, stroke, cancer, chronic respiratory diseases, and diabetes, type two diabetes. Now, I don't think there's anybody listening or watching this class this evening that hasn't been affected by chronic disease, either personally uh, in their life or with friends or, or loved ones or family members. So it is a huge problem. I think it's one of our biggest global problems. So why is this such a problem? Or let's talk about what's really changed. So just about any place in the world you go where mechanization, uh, faster pace of life, globalization, uh, processing of foods um, is or, or has developed, we find chronic diseases. Now, if we look at this, say, 100 years ago in the early 1900s, the biggest cause of death, biggest disease problems we had were infectious diseases. Uh, diseases like pneumonia, tuberculosis, gastrointestinal infections, and those were our biggest killers, representing nearly 70% of deaths in the early 1900s. So 100 years later, or a little over 100 years later, what's changed? Um, have, have we changed much biologically? No, we changed biologically very slowly, and, and you know, uh, but we've changed just about everything else around us. And the principles of self-care, the factors that, that we talk about as culprits for chronic disease are really four simple things. It's drinking enough water. Uh, most of us live our lives in a state of chronic dehydration, getting enough sleep. Uh, the average adult gets less than seven hours per night and we should sleep at least eight. Uh, we have weight issues because we are dehydrated and we aren't getting sufficient sleep and we're consuming uh, high caloric foods and basically uh, a lot of sugar. And I think we'd all agree we all live in a toxic world and each of us have more than 200 contaminants in our body. But let's kind of look at dehydration in the, in the context of how this looks on a global basis. Um, most of us live our lives in a state of chronic dehydration, 75% of Americans, 70% of Canadians, 80% in the UK. Uh, I was doing a presentation for the UK and looking at uh, uh, dehydration. And uh, one of the facts that, that came to my attention and actually shocked me was that it's estimated 20% of Britons drink no water a day. 
but 75% of the French are, are dehydrated, 50% of Germans, 80% of Australians, and, and we see this, this common theme. Dehydration has been called the mother of all epidemics and the first step we need to take in addressing chronic disease. And I totally agree with Gina Bria, the cultural anthropologist that coined this, this phrase. Um, we, it's, and it's something simple that we can do, just drink some more water. But we also have, uh, uh, we need to replenish the water we lose every day. I mean, we lose nearly 10 cups a day just through our normal physiological processes. And failure to drink enough water can lead to fatigue, joint pain, weight gain, headaches, ulcers, high blood pressure, kidney disease, type 2 diabetes. Water, it, one of the reasons we don't drink enough water is that people's perception of it um, just looking at it as a beverage choice, which it's not, it's an essential nutrient. And we really need to drink half our body weight in ounces per day to stay well hydrated. Now we have a number of water choices and, and we're lucky uh, here in the US and other developed nations where we have uh, a number of water choices, some places in the world don't, uh, but those include tap water, uh, well water, uh, filtered water, and bottled water. Now, a lot of people are suspect of tap water, but mostly because of the way it tastes or smell. And that's a residual from chlorination of water at the treatment plant. Uh, and also the other problem is when we chlorinate water, we also produce some other harmful substances like volatile organic compounds that we'd wanna filter out of there. 13% uh, of Americans are on private wells. The well water, um, needs to be tested and needs to be tested at least quarterly uh, through each season of the year. And the reason being is that many of those wells are close to agricultural areas where they're using all kinds of different uh, uh, compounds and chemicals, insecticides, fungicides, herbicides, um, the list could go on. But those can be in our well water as well. And, uh, and, and in many areas, well wells are somewhat shallow and they aren't, they aren't very deep. And so you really don't have sufficient percolation to filter the water before it gets in the well. So my advice there is if you're on well water, you wanna make sure it's healthy, make sure you have it tested. There's lots of different ways to filter water and some are better than others. And we'll talk about that more in a minute. But many people choose bottled water. And this brings us into our subject, the great bottled water debate. So let's take a look at this. A lot of people choose bottled water and it's a huge industry uh, because it's convenient and they think it's healthier. So that's a, it's, it's, it's a good choice that they think it's healthier. They're making a good choice there. In fact, uh, in 2017 uh, to current times right now, uh, bottled water actually outsells uh, soda, sale, uh, soda, soda pops. And it's nice that people are taking a healthier choice but 90% of people believe bottled water is healthy and a convenient beverage. And that's the main reason it's so popular. Oh, however, only 14% of Americans have a negative opinion of bottled water. So let's take a look at this and maybe we can get that percentage a little higher than 14%. And, and first let's look at the manufacturing and distribution impact uh, has the, has the, the, uh, the environmental impact that manufacturing and distribution of bottled water has on our environment. Uh, up to 54 million barrels of oil are used annually in the U.S. just in the manufacturing and distribution of bottled water. This creates two and a half million tons of carbon dioxide that's released into our atmosphere. Bottled water requires 2,000 times more energy to produce than our tap water. And it's wasteful of water as well. Three liters of water are used to produce one liter of bottled water. Less than 30%, and I've heard figures as low as 20% of these bottles are recycled. And it can take 450 to 1,000 years to decompose. And as plastic degrades in our environment, it releases toxic chemicals. So there are over 100 million plastic bottles used each day globally. That is an astounding figure, but even more so 
every second, 1,500 bottles end up in landfills or our oceans. Now, I've read reports where people estimate that the amount of plastic in our oceans will outweigh fish by the year 2050. Uh, I, I do not find that acceptable, personally, I really don't, and it's very scary. So the other reason people like bottled water or choose bottled water is they think it's healthy. So the Environmental Working Group did a study in 10 brands of bottled water and found 38 pollutants, including disinfection byproducts, industrial chemicals, radioactive chemicals, and bacteria. The Natural Resources Defense Council concluded that there is no assurance that bottled water is cleaner or safer than tap water. They tested 103 bottled waters and detected potentially harmful contaminants, including microbes and regulated chemicals in about 50% of the samples they tested. The consumer reports that arsenic, they found arsenic in 11 brands that they tested, including other heavy metals and disinfection byproducts, industrial chemicals, radioactive chemicals, and bacteria. We're all aware of BPA, and BPA is an endocrine disruptor. It is released from plastic, the, the plastic bottles, and we, can, we consume that when we're drinking the water. And even though it may be at low doses, 93% of us have detectable BPAs, and low dose exposure to BPA has, has uh, been linked to obesity, infertility, aggressive behavior, early onset of puberty, uh, hormone cancers, dependent cancers such as prostate and breast cancer, reproduction problems in men, and heart disease. So the other thing that many are concerned about is just a, 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 about a year and a half ago, there were a lot of reports of them finding microplastics in bottled water. And it is an estimated that one bottle of water can contain hundreds of tiny plastic particles. They also reported that somebody who drank primarily bottled water would consume about five grams weekly, which is equivalent to the weight of a credit card. So bottled water is 2,000 times more expensive than tap water, and most bottled water is no safer than tap water. But bottled water takes a much bigger toll on our environment. And also, 64% of the time that bottled water you're paying 2,000 times more for is really indistinguishable uh, chemically from tap water. Um, I kind of put it this way with people. It, it, would you ever go to a sandwich shop? And let's say we go to a sandwich shop that has a $6 sandwich. Uh, would you ever buy that sandwich if it costs $12,000? I don't think so. So I'm gonna give you some suggested viewing. Uh, it's a documentary called Tapped, The Truth About Bottled Water, and it will reiterate some of the facts and, and uh, information that I just presented. Um, they have it, you can find it on Google. Uh, you can, you can uh, watch it free on YouTube, and it's about an hour and 15 minutes long. I suggest watching the, the, the whole uh, documentary. Uh, but you can also look at some of their trailers, which are about six minutes long and they're very elucidating about the truth about bottled water. So what, what can we do? What can you do? First, get a water filter system for your home. The second, purchase a reusable water bottle, and let's reduce the amount of plastic in our environment and also help your health. So Many people ask me, what, what do you look for in a good home water filtration system? And the most affordable way for you to provide healthy water to your family is to filter tap water. The reason being that tap water is regulated, it is treated, it is monitored. Uh, it's uh, by state and federal governments. So we want to uh, use that uh, uh, disinfection to kill all the pathogens in there and the other good things that they do in our municipal water treatment plants, but we don't necessarily want the other byproducts from chlorine or chloramine uh, that they use to disinfect the water. 
So we want a, we want a system that has an advanced filtration, and we want it to meet or exceed uh, NSF and ANSI standards of 42 for aesthetics, for smell and for taste, and 53 for removal of volatile, volatile organics. We'd like to add minerals back to this water that will also increase the pH to levels of eight to about nine uh, to give us a healthy alkaline water. We'd also like that water to be um, structured the way it is in nature. So a system that would microcluster and energize that water would be great. And we want a unit that's easy to use and easy to maintain, uh, easy to put together, and one that's very cost effective to provide us with healthy water. So imagine if we could create fresh spring water in our home or office. That's the principles, that's the whole idea behind the Niken Pimag waterfall. This is a excellent, excellent water filtration system that meets all the specifications that we're looking for in a home water filtration system. We filter to NSF standards 42, 53, as I mentioned, and 372 for heavy metal reduction. We also have back, removed back 99.9% .9 of bacteria. Uh, we produce an ionized, which is with minerals, structured water that creates this alkalinity for the pH of about, on an average, of about 8.5. The unit uses no electricity or no plumbing. It's very easy to use. Uh, the water tastes sweet, very smooth. Uh, many people describe it as tasting velvety, and it is extremely hydrating because of the structured water. It's great for our environment, great for your body, and great for your wallet. If we look at the cost savings with the PyMag water system, it basically pays for itself in less than three months. And this is based on an average of four people in the household uh, drinking sufficient water. Uh, the first year is your major cost. After that, it's uh, minimal per year, just with the placement of our mineral stones and our filters. Our other suggestion was to get a portable bottle water, a reusable um, uh, water bottle. And the PyMag Sport Bottle is an eco bottle for our global wellness community. It had it, amazing filtration and what we call nano filtration technology. Uh, it also has alkalizing media to produce a, a uh, alkaline water of about pH 8.5. And it also uses uh, technology to decluster to make the water more absorbable. And it significantly reduces contaminants, including pathogens, volatile organic compounds, and microplastics from our drinking water. Uh, it captures inorganic particulates, organic materials, including cell debris, endotoxin, viruses, proteins, colloids, bacteria, heavy metals, lead, and particulates. It's an eco bottle. We fill it with tap, tap water. Uh, it's environmentally friendly, and it's made from biodegradable materials, and it works out two pennies a gallon for healthy water. Uh, this, is, this is a bottle that Heather and I take with us everywhere. We travel a lot, and we don't leave home without it. We use it in airports. We use it in our, our, when we're traveling uh, by automobile. Uh, we, we use it on the golf course, uh, just about wherever we're going. And, and many of you may have, may have seen uh, some of our little uh, sport bottle travel bites that we've posted on our, on our Facebook page, uh, Self-Care Awakening. And look at the savings in plastic bottles annually just by one person uh, switching to the sports bottle. It's 1,460 bottles and $98 for your first year of using that bottle compared to over $2,000 in buying a 20 ounce bottle of water. So we also have these products in our water pack and this includes the sport bottle, the waterfall, replacement filters, and also a shower system. Uh, we have a handheld shower system, which is pictured here, or one that mounts on the wall. And this is the best way to provide healthy water. Uh, enjoy clean, filtered, enhanced drinking water for the fraction of what bottled water costs. And as I've said before, it works without electricity or plumbing and can be used in any location. Uh, if we're traveling for some distance, so next week we'll be down in the uh, uh, Palm Springs area or Rancho Mirage, uh, we'll take our waterfall with us so we have healthy water uh, while we're staying in the condo down there for, for the week that we'll be there. It's also made with recyclable, biodegradable materials using a polymer that does not leach chemicals or harmful chemicals into our water. So 
concerns I think we have when we talk about this debate. Uh, I don't think it's much of a debate over bottled water, but uh, that's my personal opinion. But we have some real environmental issues. Um, we've shown that there's some quality issues and that bottled water isn't necessarily as healthy as most people think it is. And it is extremely expensive not only uh, for us, but for our planet. So the takeaway from this is say no to bottled water. We have other alternatives. So we invite you to join our global wellness community. Uh, you can register as customer, uh, that's free with no obligation. That gives you a direct ability to order Nikan products from your own self-care portal. And you have first access to new products and special offers. Or if you want to join our team, you can enroll as a consultant. It's $99 plus tax, you get a free personal web page, and we can make retail profits of 20% plus commissions up to 20% as well. And you'll have complete support team to help you help others be healthy by choice. The Nika and Wellness Home is a solution to all the, all of the different things that we talk about in the self-care awakening for hydration, for better sleep, for reducing our body burden of environmental toxins, and for maintaining a healthy weight. It is a, uh, it's, it's like a greenhouse for humans, or it's like a bouncer at your front door that says bad stuff can't come in here, and it, only good stuff can. Uh, it's, it's a good analogy. The, the best analogy is probably the greenhouse to where you can thrive, uh, and it's thrive, means basically providing your body with all the tools it needs to heal and repair itself. The other nice thing is that any home can be a wellness home and our mission is every home a wellness home. So we have a site that Heather created called the selfcarehub.com. You can go there, there's some freebies. Uh, this is one that we're looking at uh, that Heather created to kind of track if you're new to self-care to kind of track how you're doing, you can monitor how much sleep you're getting, how much water you're drinking, your physical activity, how much sugar you're consuming on a daily basis, and, and before these things actually become part of habits for your healthy lifestyle. So visit the selfcarehub.com, download some of those things. You can also download our very popular magazine, The Self-Care Awakening, Be Healthy by Choice. And our next class will be on March 10th at 6 p.m. Pacific. And we're gonna discuss a major global, another major global health problem, bone and joint health. So please join us and help us help everyone be healthy by choice by every home becoming a wellness home. Thank you so much for joining us this evening.